Hello everyone, in this video I'll show assembly of a vacuum cryostat, various components uh, for future experiments with cryocoolers and first two runs uh, with Stirling engine will be revealed in this video. This system will be used to evaluate behavior of various semiconductors, passive components and analog circuits under the wide temperature range down to 50 Kelvin or even less. Most of this video is speed up uh, to save viewers time, so feel free to pause it or ask questions in the comments section. I'm still very novice uh, to vacuum equipment and concepts uh, around it, so this is more like of a learning experience rather than a guide how to build a proper vacuum cryogenic system. Cryostat is built around large aluminum cylinder more than 50 cm tall. Inner volume is large enough uh, to fit even half rock uh, DMM like Keithley 2002, which already gives me some wild ideas to test pressure coefficients of commercial equipment and uh, various uh, devices in future. Top seal use a heavy stainless flange lid with uh, three large ports for equipment mounts. Combined mass of both metal components is around 58 kilograms. First, I need to clean and apply vacuum grease on all o-ring seals, as well as check and clean all the seal surfaces and grooves uh, on uh, uh, metal components. Here you can see STI Sapphire Stirling Cryocooler with 3D printer airflow director and aluminum flange adapter. I have to take those parts off to grease up uh, o-ring as well. Cooler is coupled uh, to flange by two standard KF40 bulkhead sections. Now it's time to remove the KF25 uh, vacuum port. So this is the original uh, vacuum port used uh, for this uh, cryostat before. Here is the better angle. You can see the surface is flattened to allow uh, bulkhead uh, KF25 mount as well. So this is uh, pretty straightforward uh, cleaning. Just with some APA and uh, acetone. To evacuate gases and air out of the chamber, two-stage old uh, oil vein pump will be used, Edwards model E2M8. This pump can get down to 0.5 Pascal on a good day, so after this uh, level is reached, I'll use cutoff valve uh, to isolate pump from the chamber. I hope there will be no major dicks and small residual pressure would be further reduced by operational cryocooler. This is due to cryopumping effect when nitrogen, oxygen, water condense on cold surfaces. Cryopumping is one of the valid methods to get ultra-high vacuum in industry and scientific research. In my lab, I however don't think that there is a need for ultra-high vacuum levels for experiments I planned to do with semiconductors. I also like the simplicity of this uh, setup without the major cost and noise involved in running a turbo pump and hardware to attach them with the, the chamber I have here. All the connections uh, between vacuum chamber and uh, vacuum pump are done with KF25 interface. So I have adapters on both the uh, vacuum pump and the chamber and just clamping them down with uh, a rubber uh, orange seal. And it's important to keep uh, everything clean. Otherwise the dust uh, will uh, cause uh, some uh, seal problems and uh, you will have uh, a leak.
And also a good idea not to throw O-rings on the floor. So I have to replace with a new O-ring and then resume the assembly. Here I got KF16T to interface with thermocouple based Edwards APGX-L vacuum gauge. This gauge is powered uh, from 24 volt uh, positive supply and provides linear voltage output relative to pressure at the input port. APGX-L pressure range is from 10,000 Pascal down to 001 Pascal, well enough to reach the limit that uh, my vein pump uh, can achieve. And here we are back at the steel lid, so I'll have to prepare all the ports and also large round uh, port is for the cryocooler, smaller one for electrical hermetic fit through interfaces and the oval port is for future use. That electrical fit through is actually a copper plate with the nickel plating. So it will be possible to modify or change it uh, later uh, with some uh, low thermal interfaces if I need to. Here I am soldering super thin 4 wire cable from temperature sensor manufactured by Scientific Instruments. It is a special diet designed for cryogenic temperature sensing all the way down to 1.5 Kelvin. Sadly, I do not have a calibration curve for my particular diets, so this will be a challenge to solve next year. Here is a size comparison to SMT0603 capacitor and DEEP8 package. As you can see, those wires are super thin and actually quite challenging to solder. And there's the backlight, so I can actually see when the chamber is sealed. So let's see that. I can show you how this backlight will work. Hopefully there will be enough light for the camera. Just a couple of the LEDs and a couple of the resistors. And then of course I insulated my temperature sensor in the just shiny reflection foil. And then the cry cooler will be mounted on that uh, spot. So, let's assemble it.
And at this moment I turn on the vacuum pump to get most of the air out and started monitoring uh, vacuum gauge and temperature. So here is the controller running with uh, Raspberry Pi 4 and uh, IPS uh, LCD display. So just uh, some test output and you can see I'm testing a valve to see uh, if it's actually can hold the vacuum. Here is the actual audio from the lab when everything is running, so the most noisy part was uh, the fan, but otherwise it's not that bad, so definitely it can be run for a long time. Now the fire cooler operating. I'm actually show you the counter rate. Cool. And we have the temperature is going down. Also at this moment uh, temperature output is just a calculation from the wrong curve so uh, actually the temperature is not correct but the voltage uh, in red on the screen is the readout from Lakeshore 331 temperature monitor uh, logging the data from uh, cryogenic diode. So the lowest temperature I could achieve, or I, I should say lowest voltage uh, uh, level uh, that representing temperature I could achieve was uh, 1.09 volts and that's equivalent around uh, 45 to 50 Kelvin uh, based on my educated guess on behavior of cryogenic temperature diets and this was uh, with the uh, power delivered uh, to inverter board and uh, cry cooler around 125 watts as you can see from uh, chroma programmable AC source and the cry cooler was powered with this switching track of power supply and inverter board is uh, original STI uh, board designed for this uh, cry cooler operation and the next uh, step was to replace the valve with a better one so hopefully I could uh, obtain a better vacuum seal and will be able to seal the uh, chamber uh, from the pump and here is the new valve that is installed on the chamber
Also for second run, I added second uh, temperature monitor, uh, also Lakeshore model 331, with the same model diet, the second diet, connected uh, to the same copper plate, so we could compare two diets. Even without the calibration on either of them, we could at least see if they agree well to each other, or if there is a big discrepancy. So at the room temperature, the agreement was within few millivolts. And uh, as you will see later in the run, it will actually keep uh, around the same difference, uh, plus minus couple millivolts uh, between each other. So everything else in the system remained unchanged and we just did the second run. This time I used a standard curve in both thermometers set to DT670 diet, which is still incorrect for my sensors to be fully trusted, but I think we should be in a 10 Kelvin error ballpark, I hope. With new valve, vacuum could go also lower, and I've cut the vein pump off after 1 pascal. Power at the cryocooler was set at a level uh, to 80 to 100 uh, watts. I've reached ultimate temperature according to this incorrect curve around uh, 40 kelvins so with the voltage uh, respected on uh, probe 1 it was around uh, 1.091 volts and second uh, sensor was reading around 1.083 volts as you will see later in the video. According to research article, scaling STI sapphire, this cryocooler is actually able to reach temperatures around 40 Kelvin without heat load at the cold finger. While I'll, I maintain a degree of skepticism around attainment of 40 Kelvins here as an absolute temperature, it's not entirely implausible. The forthcoming calibration of reference thermometer sensors will serve as a pivotal step in instilling confidence in accuracy of my temperature measurements. Subsequently, I plan to calibrate all unknown diodes using the actual uh, curves and uh, calibrated reference sensor. Anticipated for the upcoming year, a comprehensive range of experiments will be conducted, spanning from room temperature down to 40 Kelvin, facilitated by this STI head. It's worth to highlight that my exploration will not be confined only to 40 Kelvin temperature, rather it's the first step before I install much larger multi-stage cold heads in conjunction with the existing cryostat setup and in future cooler endeavors. Until then, peace to you all and best wishes for new 2024 year. Slava Ukraini!